Hello guys, Nigel here with you, Nigel's Modeling Bench, and I have another kit review for you today. And this is a kit that as soon as I saw it announced, I was like, yes, I want it. And then sort of forgot about it really. I looked and looked and looked and all over the things that happened, you know, the things that have gone on the last couple of years. Um, and all of a sudden it's become available and a kind gentleman called John Hughes has been in touch with me regarding this. This is Dora. Uh, the great big gun, as you know, I made a start on this a couple of years ago and lost my mojo with it straight away. Um, basically, I think the best of all three kits is probably the Hobby Boss 172nd. You've got the 1144th um, from Soul Art and you've also got the 135th from Soul Art. And, oh God, I don't think there's anything right with it. Um, but basically, um, this book here, Deutsche Eisenbahn Geschütz, I think that's German Railway Guns uh, by Gerhard Taub. Um, this book is absolutely awesome. If you want to build a Dora, it's the one you need. The only trouble is, if you look closely at the photographs, you will see all the mistakes in the model. Like the railings are wrong, and the, these bogies are wrong, and the height of the railings here are wrong, and the frames in between the two main uprights are wrong, and oh, it just goes on and on and on. The actual barrel's too long as well on all the, all the kits, I think. But um, basically what this video is about is about this, because John got in touch with me and said, He'd recently bought the Trumpeter 135th scale V188 D311 locomotive, which is a diesel electric locomotive done in pairs, so back to back, and absolutely mint. Love it to bits. Uh, as soon as I saw it, I'm hoping they do it in 70 second scale because it will be a lot more appropriate. I think this is like nearly a meter long or something, just the two, just the two engines on their own. But um, you can see they feature mainly here. I have seen a German review of the kit and they said that it was actually used to shunt the gun uh, in the curve because you know they have a curved railway line because they couldn't actually um, rotate the gun at all so what they did they put on a curved railway line so they could move the gun around so obviously as it went around the the curve it could change its aim um, so that was that uh, but looking in here and speaking to John and stuff it looks like it was probably more likely used for shifting ammunition and stuff um, around. You can see here, it says, this here says basically it's got coaches um, with um, with ammunition in and a temperature controlled unit as well to keep the ammunition at the right temperature. So they were obviously using them to shunt them around as the gun was moving. I didn't know until John told me yesterday, uh, I didn't know that the gun could actually move itself. So there we go. And there we go, Wally. Um, and this is what the German guards painted onto the train. So you can see there she is there, V188, D311. Um, so, and you can see it's got all the lovely camouflage paint and everything on there. I don't know if it's camouflage or what it was for. But I'm guessing the reason they use these is because if they'd use steam, they'd have had the smoke going up in the air. It would have given away the location and stuff. So I'm guessing why they use these. And apparently I did read somewhere that the ones that were used with Dora were diesel electric, whereas the original design of the train was supposed to be diesel hydraulic. So... I don't know, I don't know enough about trains, but when I saw that kit come out, I thought, yeah, I'm having that. I'm definitely having that because I love it. So I looked around online and there's a few places that have it on pre-order still. And there's a few places that said they have one in stock. And then when I tried to order it, the website went more funny. And then I found Scale Model Shop Leeds, or The Model Shop Leeds, I can't remember which one it is now. Um, and this came. Now, I bought this on Thursday night and pay an extra couple of quid to get Royal Mail 24 hour. And um, amazingly, this turned up today. Today is Saturday, the 2nd of July. And absolutely amazed that it turned up. So um, really, really pleased. So good on you, uh, Model Shop Leads. Really good on you. And the reason I'm doing this box like this uh, is so that we can see the packaging. Because as you know, I'm very fussy about packaging. And we all know that some companies are very, very good at it. And we all know that some companies not mentioning any names, are very, very bad at it. I bought a kit this week from Amazon that came from a certain company. And yes, once again, it came in a plastic bag. If I'd noticed it was coming from that company, I probably wouldn't have bought it. So there we go, but never mind. So here we are, this is the box. There is the invoice with my address on it, no doubt. So there's the box and there it is upside down. And we can see the train there with all its glossiness and everything. And it is a perfect fit in this box. So I'm going to turn the camera off, get it all out and everything. Um, but you can see that it's been beautifully packaged in this lovely thick cardboard box. And they've actually made the box by the look of it to go around this one perfectly. 
Okay, so we have a moss massive massive a massive box, very very glossy as you can see. The slightest bit of light is just going to reflect off it, but it is huge. Uh, it must be six inches deep, and it's nearly this. So this is a this is an A2 cutting mat underneath it. You can see there, so you can see how big the box is. It's massive. Uh, so on the front, you've got beautiful image of Wally there. I'm not sure how accurate all the painting is. Probably pretty good. Uh, and we've got here, we've got Vermax Locomotive V188 D311. Um, length is 876.2 millimeters, so a, not, not quite a meter. Uh, 140 millimeters wide, 720 plus parts. Detailed scale kit for adult collectors to assemble. Actual model may vary from image on box. So we might have an F16 fighter in here for all we know. Who knows? Uh, warning not for children under three years due to small parts. If there's children under three years getting these for a gift, I suggest their parents need to revise their present buying habits. Anyway, so this is the kit here. So let's have a look around the box. And on the side here, we've got the typical trumpeter sort of 3D thing. Um, I'd rather see pictures of a built model like Ravel do, but never mind. Um, so we can see here we've got the, uh, the buffers and everything. It's all looking mostly detailed. And we've got a uh, linking thing there. Uh, side ladders and doors by the look of it, or steps should I say, and doors, um, which is handy because on the real thing we've got them, so it's handy we've got them in here. We've got some cab interior, it looks fairly simple, but we have got some cab interior. We've got the large fan that's going in the top for the engine cooling, and then we've got a door going on the back there by the look of it. And then here we've got, not quite sure, that's like a double floor thing, probably where the two um, trains attach to each other. And then we've got some detailed images here of the uh, rolling assembly, some springs, other bits and pieces. And then we've got a long track bed, track and track ends and that by the look of it there. So there we are. And here we can see Trumpeter 2021. So going around to the end of the box here, we have, here we go. Oh, price label, 143.99. I didn't pay that. I paid 129.99, so I was happy. Um, so there we go. There's another, another lovely little picture of it. And here we have a couple of options you can do. So in Trumpeter style, as you can see, no description whatsoever. Uh, this is what Trumpeter do these days and it really annoys me. They will give you like all these different options. Um, you know, some military vehicles, you get five or six different options and they don't give you any clue as to what they are. So that's that one and that's that one. OK, I think this is the one that worked with Dora. I don't know what that is. So. Not a clue. Uh, have to do some research. We've got some photo etch there, two lots of photo etch. We've got some decals there. Pedding House have actually come out with a decal set for this. So it's probably worth having, although it won't be cheap. But um, Pedding House are really, really good. And then on the other end of the box, basically the same thing again. So let's get this box open and have a look. And then we can move our camera to a normal position. Because at the moment, it's about as far out as it can go. Um, so there we have. Inside here we have a beautiful box which is absolutely, oh my god they're huge, I wasn't expecting them to be that big. Uh, so here we can see, just in case you want to get one, this is what's coming up. This is the 100% new tooling Fairmax Locomotive V188. So uh, thanks for putting that in our trumpeter, I'll look out for that kit when it arrives. And over here we've got um, scale models February 22 to April 22. Soviet Aerosan KM4, I thought they did that already, but hey. Um, Maybe it's a different variant. And then here we've got the uh, 983 Hempton 901 launching system with the Patriot uh, in 70 second scale. So that'll be quite nice. So um, nice kit to get. And that'll probably be a nice little kit to get as well with the fan on the back. Interesting little diorama piece there. So and then here we have a bucket load of plastic. So we've got loads of sleepers here. So probably we're going to have the same system as Trump to normally do where you put the track up from underneath the bed. And then you've got the rails here tracks here let's have a quick look well we'll look at the minute when we do the, the sprue review but um normally they have bloody ejector pin marks all down them so uh we've got the beautiful bodies of the actual train itself here as you can see it's in this typical hobby boss plastic so maybe this was going to be a hobby boss kit um be interesting to see if we get any detail inside i bet we don't i bet you just get an open cavern to look through so uh, here we go and then we've got here we've got oh this is some track bed look here you go. This is where you see you put the track up through from underneath. That way you can paint your gravel and everything. And that way your ballast, shall I say. And then you can put the sleepers through and not have to worry about masking anything. 
So that's not very nice having that in there like that. I hope it hasn't all scratched that up and everything. Nope, it's all good. So that's good. That was in the other way, wasn't it? That's why. Duh. Me causing the damage, not, not temperature. So um, I'm going to get this all out of the box, get the instructions out, and then we'll uh, have a look through the instructions. Let's see what we've got. But there is lots and lots of sprues in here. I'm going to count the sprues. There's hundreds. So I'll see you in a minute. Right, so here we go. This is the instruction manual. Typical trumpeter style with the end open. A4 size book. We've got 20 pages, 41 steps. So uh, let's go for it. Of course, making models like this for manufacturers is just a gem because they just have to make one of everything and then put twice as many in the kit because you've got two things the same. I'm guessing they're going to be the same. Um, so front of the instructions, you can see here, we've got the, the two trains there back to back linked together and we've got some advice and probably some health and safety stuff as well. So typical trumpeter, sprue call outs here all on one page, nice and clearly printed and numbered if you've got a magnifying glass. So going into the build, we're starting off with the driver's compartments. We've got an instrument panel there, with all these switches and everything on. Uh, looks like, yes, we get decals for that. Uh, we've got some little levers and stuff going on there. We've got the wheel, the goo, they, they turn that thing, don't they? And then we've got some doors there into the engine compartment. Big switch panel there. Uh, looks like we've got some decals for that as well. And there's like a wheel on there as well. I'm guessing that's some sort of brake or something, I'm guessing. Uh, and then we've got some doors being constructed here with handles on them. We have got some colour call outs in here. It's telling us flat black um, for these controls, but it's not telling us what colour the actual rest of the thing is. I did read somewhere it's like a sort of straw brown colour, um, almost like a sort of off-white colour. So we'll have to do a bit of research on that. Uh, so over the page here, straight into the major construction of the actual train itself so we've got the floor there some parts of the chassis there and then we've got the actual bulkhead and the driver's controls going in there again it's make two everything's going to be make two make four i'm guessing here we've got make eight look uh, and then we've got the um the linkage there which links the trains together and then here we've got what's this lights i'm guessing they're lights we've got a pe mounting for that and then we've got the hydraulic uh, the airlines connecting the um connecting the trains together for the brakes buffers going on there Interesting to see if the buffers are correct because uh, I think one should be radius and one should be flat. Or was that only the Americans and English did that? I don't know. People will tell me in the comments, no doubt, because there are lots and lots of train type people out there, and I'm not one of them. Um, so here we've got these things. I don't know what they are. It'd be nice if they told us, wouldn't it? I'm not sure what they are. They're probably parts of the suspension because we've got eight of those, eight of those, eight of those, and eight of those. So that's going to drive you crazy for sure. Uh, we've got a couple of doors to make up here with some little handles and stuff on. Looks like the detail is very nice and all the separate handles and stuff rather than having it all just moulded on blobs of plastic. And then we've got some window frames going in here. Um, and then we've got a P part going on the side. Okay, that's going to be folded into that and then that's going to go in the side there. And then we've got the uh, windows going in here, some doors going in. And then we have uh, mirrors, is that mirrors or wipers? Not quite sure, and then we've got some glazing going in there. Looks like we're going to get some masks for the windows as well. Um, and then we've got that door going on the end there, and the big extractor fan for the cooling of the engines. PE mesh grill going on there, and then a plastic frame going around the outside. I'm assuming the plastic frame will go over the mesh, I'm not sure. Uh, and then we've got some little hooks and stuff, it looks like there, and then a couple of uh, sides to go on that um, fresh air vent thing in the top there. And then we've got some suspension parts. Here we go. So this is going to be mega. It's got eight of those, eight of those. And then we've got some suspension uh, units here going for the, uh, this is going to be for the front and back, I think. Or well, the, the back of both the trains. It's the front of one and the back of the other, isn't it, I guess. Are they classed as front and back? Like, is that front, back, front, back? Or is it front, front, back, back? Please tell me, train people. I'd like to know. Um... So building up that, and I'm guessing this is the assembly that goes joins the two trains together. And then we've got four of those things, whatever they may be, being built up. And then we're into our main drive units. Um, Gearboxes on the end, that's going to be reduction gears. And then we've got some wheels going on there. And then that end plate going in there. And then that end plate going into that one. Fitting all our leaf springs with all our hubs. And they're going into the main frame rails there. I did read somewhere that Wehrmacht's um, colours were 
inside of all the suspension, inside of the wheels and inside of the chassis and everything was all red, obviously for clarity, for inspection and everything. And then everything else that you could see from the outside was dark green. That's it. So uh, we shall have to see. Um, but there we go, putting those units together there. Looks like it doesn't move or anything, but they are, looks like they are quite nicely detailed. Um, so chassis all going together there. Looks like we've got a control lever for a brake or something going in there. Is that going to be a brake? I'm guessing it is. And then we've got some sort of tank there. It's probably an air tank. And then we've got our brake shoes going on there. And then all the links for our brake shoes all looks beautifully detailed. All separate parts. No big molded clusters of stuff. And it all looks pretty complete. And it's all, you could probably make it all work if you really wanted to. Um, and then we've got another chassis stiffener going in there. Uh, got two of those, the same both sides, there's one already fitted. And they've got these things here, I'm not sure what they are, but they're things, that's for sure, they certainly are things. And then we've got some supports here, some outriggers for the actual body there. And then we're going to add the floor onto the actual, um, onto the actual chassis itself, and then tip the body over and drop the floor down in. And then we've got some PE steps and grates grills to go on the sides here to make up the steps going the side nice they've made those out of PE they'll look lovely and then uh, again the same on the other side so this is oh, okay so you're doing that first and then you're doing this I thought this was two different trains but you're doing that first and then we're going to build up our road bed so it's telling us to uh, cut and remove that piece off of the end of there um, it's a bit weird, there might be a score line in there. And then we're going to cut a couple of pieces off that track link there and then put it all together and then add in our rails and put the joiners in. Job done. And then put your train down on there and you're all ready and get set to go. And you've got your big uh, dumbbell thing in the middle to connect the two trains together there. So all going to look lovely. If you just want to display this train on its own, there you are. If you're going to have it, you know, towing something else, um, I think it was basically used for heavy shunting, so you could have a couple of tanks on a couple of carriages or, so, or a couple of um, beds or something, and they're being shunted around or whatever. I guess you could always have it pulling a, moving a BR-52 that's powered down or whatever. So I guess the choice is yours. Um, and here we have some colour callouts. So this is option A. Sorry about the glossiness, guys. This is option A. Again, it's not telling us anything about the period, what it was, the marking, the serial numbers, who owned it. Just version A. And it's something that I wish Trumpeter would bloody stop doing. I wish they could. They used to tell us. They used to tell us years ago it's from such and such battalion of such and such period in such and such squadron on such and such a day. And that was that. But now it's just nothing. So there we are. And they're going over the page, there's this one here, and as I say, I haven't got a clue what it is. Maybe someone can tell us all in the comments below, but um, it's different camouflage. It's obviously just a general use shunter. But the thing is, I would like to know, I'm not sure if this is correct, because if they've modelled this on the train that was used with Dora, as I said, I read that that was diesel electric, all of the other trains were diesel hydraulic. So I'm not sure if this is going to be correct you know, accuracy wise to make that because maybe the train in that scheme was actually diesel hydraulic. So who knows? When I find the decals, I will show you them. But at the moment, I haven't been able to find them. So let's start having a look at some plastic. What have we got here? So this is our main cab. And as you can see, this here is inches. Um, so this cab is nearly a foot long. It's 11 and a half inches long. Um, Let's bag open and see how it looks. It does look very nice indeed with some very nice surface detail which would be appropriate for a train in this scale. There we go. So there we go. So lovely nice smooth finish on there. We've got a mould seam there to sand out. Nothing much at all. I don't know if you can see that on the camera. But there is a there is a mold seam there. Uh, we'll just sand. That's going to take nothing more than a few swipes with a sanding stick, and uh, 
because it's been because we've got this lovely detail everywhere it's going to have been slide molded so you're going to get these seams so we've got a seam running around there down the side we've got a seam going down there and then this one will be a seam over the top there that you probably won't see until you prime it but um very nice indeed you can see we've got some lovely detail on those louvers and the same all down there all those cooling louvers all the way down the sides and then we've got the Lovely rivet detail and bolt detail and everything on there. And then here, same again, all the lovely raised rivet detail. Looking lovely, it's going to take a dry brush and a wash beautifully. It's going to look lovely. And there, there you've got a pip on the top there, that's your injection point. And there's another one there, that's where the plastic has been injected. Um, there are some uh, ejector pin marks on the inside. But we have no detail inside anyway, so I don't know quite what we're going to do there. Uh, you can't leave it like this, just clear windows, so you can just look straight through, because that's going to look awful. I guess we could paint the back of the windows black, or we could just put some stuff in there. You know, just some cigarette packets or anything, just some boxes, anything. Some Lancaster, you know, put a Lancaster, you know, it's a Lancaster engine, let's put that in there. There we go, that'll look better than just looking through, wouldn't it? <laughs> no. Um, so, yeah, we'll have to do a bit of research and see what was in there and perhaps, you know, maybe there was a partition. If we just put a piece of plastic card across the middle, but we certainly don't just want it all open to look straight through. Maybe just paint the back of the windows black, whatever. But in 35th scale, I'm not sure that's going to be very nice. But, um, I want to put this away because I don't want to put anything on it and have that surface detail being damaged because it is very, very nice indeed. And the plastic bag will give it some protection, no doubt. There we go, let's put that like that. So, put that in there. And then we've got a second one there. Obviously, I'm not going to get that one out. There's no point. Track bed here. I don't need to get this out. You can see you've got all the lovely gravel and everything on there. And then the track's going to go up underneath. There's that piece there. We've all seen this before. It's typical trumpeter stuff. And then end pieces there. So again, typical trumpeter stuff. We've got to do some work on one of them to shorten it. Beautiful trumpeter packaging. That's the foam between. I've found the decals. Foam between everything. You can see how this has uh, made all these marks in the plastic bag. The plastic bag, uh, and that would um, that would obviously mark the parts above it. But nope, they put this lovely foam on there. Thank you, trumpeter. And it all goes into a separate little box. There we go. This all goes into a separate box within the main box. So again, thank you, Trumpeter. Your packaging is always amazing. So there we are. So in here we have some photo etch. So we've got two of these. So very, very simple photo etch. So we've got our our uh, checkered um, plates there for our steps going into the cab. We've got some little brackets here which have to be folded up. We've got a couple of grills there and then the main grill that's going to go across the top of the uh, the train there for the, um, for the extractor fan, for the cooling and everything. And then in here we have our decals and our masks. I don't really, I'm not going to get the decals out because I don't know how long it's going to be till I build this. So I'm not going to get the decals out of the bag. But we can see on there we basically have a load of white lettering um, and then we've got some control panels here for the, for the cab. And then we've got our um, marking on here to say they were made by Krupp and everything. So uh, that's basically our data labels. So yeah, all very, very nice indeed. Um, but the, if you look at the Pedding House sheet, there's a lot more on there than that. So, and this is for two versions, remember. So, you know, um, if you are into your stuff and you want it to look good, I would definitely go for the Pedding House decals. Uh, and on the back here, we have our die cut window masks, which is a nice touch. Some of the trumpeters are doing a lot lately. So that's cool. So thank you for that trumpeter. Um, so basically here we've got more track. We saw this earlier. I'm just going to have a look in this bag because I want to see. I want to see if we have that ejector pin mark issue. So many other tracks, track sections have. No, fair play. They've got these ejector... You've got these ejector pin tabs on here, look. So basically, we have no ejector pin marks in our railings at all. 
we just have all the tabs on the outside to trim off so that's a nice touch and it also looks like yeah they've had the thought to put the trim tabs on the ejection pin tabs on the bottom so all the sprue cleanup is on the underside and you've just got a couple of bits there to clean up on the top so very thoughtful that's one good thing about trumpeter they have over the years they have listened to us about ejector pins and sprue connection points and everything they've, they've really gone out of their way to listen to us and do a great job I think and uh, fair play to them they've done it really really well so in here I think it's going to be a theme with this kit we've got a doubled up sprue so we've got two of everything so in here we have this is sprue D not that it matters you can see on here we've got that lovely bolted ring there that's going to go around your um, mesh on your top of your, your train and we've got that fan in there which is beautifully detailed I will give you close-ups in a minute we've got some sort of lever there for something or other another connection rod there part of the suspension by the look of it doors this looks like those plates that go over the ends uh, and then we've got the control panel here for the um for the pilot is he a pilot driver or whatever driver I guess tiny tiny little bits on here for the driver again very very nice indeed um, and some very very fine molding and look at that those doors have no ejector pin marks in them so thanks for that trumpeter beautifully done and we've got our buffers and as I said one is flat and one is radiused so uh, you can see on there one is flat one is radiused we have the chassis here part of the chassis there and you can see that lovely molded on bolt detail there's that ring that's going to go on the roof doors as you can see no ejector pin marks really really nice uh, and then we've got this fan here which is beautifully molded very very fine deep you know, easy to break those fans off i'm guessing and then we've got all the uh, the connection pipes there and that lever or something whatever that's for but yeah very very nice indeed which i think will be the theme through this kit i'm going to put this away because i don't want that fan to get hooked up on anything and away like that. There we'll go. We have another sprue with some track parts. Now in here we've got our we're getting into the big stuff now. So we've got the again two of these. So this is our main chassis rails. As I say in that review I read, please tell me if I'm wrong guys, but the review I read it said that the inside of these would have been painted bright red. And the inside of the suspension and the wheels everything else dark green but, uh, there's the air tank there in two halves we've got some cross members there our actual main chassis legs there um, again unbelievably there are no yes there are bloody hell they've got some ejector pin marks here but they've polished the pins so well you can hardly see them and bearing in mind that is the inside that's absolutely wonderful what well on trumpeter really nice this is the a-team i think um, again we have that door there with no ejector pin marks in it we've got ejector pin marks on the back of these pins these uh, chassis members here but not to worry but uh, we can see on there the beautiful detail on those chassis rails with all the bulk detail and the brackets and everything very very beautifully made you can just imagine getting all that dirty and grubby and oily it's going to look great so really really nice get this one back in here Go away. Here we go. Now I've put that in backwards. Deal with that later. Oh, we have a sprue here with just, we have a bag with one sprue in it. It's unusual. So, take that one out of there. So, we've got here, we've got obviously, this is the main floor of the train now. And that's up inside and this is the underside and you can see you've got all that lovely bolt detail on there where those brackets are going to fit on those outriggers uh, and then we have the the main bulkhead within the train that's all very nice it's got detail on both sides so maybe there's plans of doing an interior kit for it or something i don't know maybe somebody will bring out a, a resin engine or something who knows but um we certainly need something when we look inside those windows we got some uh, spring units there. I think that was for the um, linkages, wasn't it? And then we got that one there. I think that was for linkage as well. And then we got the main driver's control area. 
this here is our end for our buffer by the look of it. And then under here we have, blimey that's nice, that's all the switch gear under there, look for the driver. Very nicely moulded indeed, beautiful. And it's nice the trumpeter go to the trouble to do things like this rather than just shove it all in a box and look for the best, you know. It's really nice that they do it and they always have and it's um, something they've always been extremely good at. Even when their kits in the old days, even when their kits weren't the, good, weren't the best, they still did fantastic packaging. There's that one there. Now we've got these sprues here. I've got four of these by the look of it. So uh, we'll just get one out. So we don't need to get them all out. We'll just get one out and have a look and see what it's all about. That was silly, wasn't it? A chance of breaking things then. So um, there's one of those rear uh, fore aft cross members we saw. Cross members. Four aft rails we saw, not a cross member. That's our dummy, our dumbbell for towing the two trains. Connection linkage there for the brakes by the look of things. And then here we've got the, these looks like the bits and pieces for our uh, buffers, I'm guessing. And we've got some more cross members, some little brackets there for the steps. Some railings there. Very, very nice indeed. There's no flash. I can't see any big seam lines or anything. This is all slide molded, so you get that beautiful detail on the end of there, look. Very thoughtfully made. Very, very thoughtfully made. Um, so, uh, yeah, really, really nice. Very, very nice indeed. Stick that one back in there. There we go. That's that one got in there. And then this one here, we have two, four, six, eight. <laughs> Eight of those sprues, wow, that's got all our wheels and everything on obviously. So we shall have a look in here. Put this one up on both out rather than risk damaging one. So that can go over there. So here we have, this is sprue E and we have eight of them as you've just seen. So these are our reduction gear covers for the end of our uh, suspension. More of those springs there, we've got our brake shoes here. Uh, and then obviously these are our wheels. This is the inner face of the wheels. Uh, ends of brake cylinders by the look of it. And then we've got some outriggers there. And there are no... Yeah, there is. There, there are tiny ejector pin marks on the outriggers by the look of it. Uh, but it looks like they're raised, so it just be one quick swipe with the sanding stick. Uh, no ejector pin marks in the rims, which is a nice touch. And... Very nicely done indeed. Now I'm not sure here, you can see on these rims, if I can catch it in the light, you can see it's sort of segmented going around the rim. Now I'm not sure if that's correct and how it should be, or if that's a form of ejector system they've used, so they've made the outside of the wheel in segments so they could actually push it out of the tool. Um, I would have thought they would have pushed it from the centre and these may just be mould lines but yeah they carry on around the edge so I'm, I'm guessing I'm guessing there's some kind of segment that they've actually moulded they're pushing the tool out with these segmented parts but don't count don't quote me on it I'm not sure but there we are so that's our uh, that's the wheels they do look very very nice they do have those segments on them you can see on there the reduction gear has some nice bolt detail around it. So yeah, the moulding is um, top class. It's, uh, it's really, really up there. Top notch. Very nicely done indeed. So here we have two, four, six, Eight of those sprues so if you don't like repetitive work this probably isn't the kit for you um, so we'll get these out and have a look see what we think of them it's 
So there's sprue F. So we've got some more of those brake leakages there. Look there. We've got some of these. I'm not sure what these are. Please tell me what they are. They're like because they drop something on the track or something to help the wheels grip. Perhaps let me know. Leaf springs there, which are beautifully done. Yeah, they've hollowed the back out so that they don't get the sink marks in them, which is a nice touch. Because obviously the back goes up against the chassis. It doesn't matter that it's hollowed out. Got some tiny, tiny little hooks on there. Look at those parts on there. Absolutely minuscule. And then here we've got our, I'm assuming this is our electric motor or something. Um, and then some pieces there, I'm guessing they're for the end of here. And then we've got some axles, I'm guessing that are axles for the wheels. Very nice indeed. As you can see on there, it's all crisp, all sharp, lovely, lovely sharp detail. And it's all going to get hidden underneath the train. So, but uh, very, very nice indeed. Very pleasing kit. And in this day and age, for £129, not bad. Although I see most people sell it for about 150 as I say, Scale Model Shop Leeds, or The Model Shop Leeds, I can't remember now. Uh, it was 129.99, but I think this was the last one. So they may have just had a few at that price and then the next batch they get will be uh, more expensive. There is something that other manufacturers need to look at and take note. Look at that. In a plastic bag, tightly wrapped in foam, so nothing rattles around, nothing comes off the sprues, nothing gets scratched, nothing gets damaged. And I'll bet these clear parts are amazing. So that's why they better be because they're just flat. So they can't really be much else than amazing, can they? But um, let's cut that tape rather than rip the foam. Right. So here, are manufacturers, take note. This is how you map. This is how you wrap clear parts. So this is Sprue GP, which is common for uh, for trumpeter. And look at that. How nice is that? It's a little bit wavy, the glass. You can see that the reflection of the light in it. A little bit wavy, but for the period, it's probably correct. Let's find something with some writing on it. Um, here's the instructions. Not that it really matters, because there's nothing in the side to see. But we should be able to see that when we look through here, there is no distortion. So really, really nice. As I say, it doesn't matter a toss because there's nothing to see. But um, very nicely done. And obviously in there we'll have another one the same. Okay. But if you look at the care that's taken, you know, this is what manufacturers need to do. It's just take the care, listen to the modeler, listen to the complaints. Make a note and then act upon it and if it costs you an extra couple of quid to do that then put an extra couple of quid on the price it ain't going to cost you a couple of quid to do that it might cost you an extra 25 pence so put 25 pence on the price it's like i say with revel and i love revel's customer service they're one of the best in the world to deal with but i'm sorry revel your boxes are rubbish so please put an extra pound on the price and give us decent boxes like this like this trumpeter box I could put this in my stash and put another 50 kits on top of it and it'd be absolutely fine. Revel kit, you put another Revel kit on top and it's destroyed. So anyway, that has been the review of that kit, mate. Uh, people, mate, people. Um, that is the Vermax Locomotive um, V188, as I say, D311 uh, from Trumpeter. It's brand new, just out of the last, within the last month. Kit number 00225. If you do like your trains and you want to build the ultimate 135th scale Dora diorama, yeah, Dora diorama, then um, this is probably going to be part of your uh, on, on your wish list. But if you've got the room for a Dora and this and everything in front of it, then I suggest you probably live in an aircraft hangar. So I um, hope you've enjoyed that. I've enjoyed looking at it and I'm really, really glad I got it. And uh, it's beautiful, but it's much, much bigger than I thought it was going to be. So Trumpeter, if you're listening, Please, please, yeah, do it one seventy second scale so we can get it to go with our Hobby Boss one. Because that would be really good. No doubt there. No doubt in my mind whatsoever you will see this in one seventy second scale before the year's out. So, mark my words. 
Right, thanks for watching. I'll see you all soon, guys. Oh, hit the like. Don't forget to hit that like, please. Bye for now.